Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about that upcoming major tornado outbreak that's going to be going on throughout the day. Today, we have been upgraded to a high risk, unfortunately, as well. I wanted to mention that. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, when do you think our next severe weather event is going to be? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, we're taking a look at the current radar, and this is very important, by the way, but before you ask, yeah, it really is actually 4.32 right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so don't even ask. I, I'm making this very early because I wanted to get this information out as early as possible and I have to set up my stream and stuff for later today. So yes, it really is 4.32. I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning. We see all of that precipitation there for Arkansas, Alabama, uh, as well as Mississippi and Georgia as well. That's going to be moving up into Tennessee, which is all of our high-risk regions. We'll be taking a look at that in just a moment, all of those uh, risk regions. But the important thing here is for that instability to really, really take place to a high risk level. What would basically be very bad at this point is if this precipitation manages to move out very, very quickly. And then that sunshine moves in. We see those temperatures move up. The dew points move up and that convective available potential energy, that cape, will increase then. Uh, and that's just going to help those supercells develop earlier in the afternoon. Uh, and, and really create some bad tornadic situations. If this precipitation lingers, it's not going to let the sunshine get through. It's not going to let the dew points go up. It's not going to let the temperatures go up quite as much. And that will limit that amount of cape, which would therefore limit the supercells a little bit. Uh, so that would be best case scenario at this point is if these showers continue throughout the, the late morning especially. So what we're going to do is actually take a look at the satellite in just a moment as well, which is going to be crucial. You can actually see that this would manage to let the sun get through. Uh, last week when we saw our high risk, it was still cloudy even once those showers moved through. Uh, and those temperatures were able to kind of get up. The dew points were kind of able to get up. But look at this. You can see the ground here from this satellite imagery. Um, so we can see straight through. That is moving up into Mississippi where things have already cleared out. Southern Arkansas, same story. That is going to generally move from south to north, obviously. That clearing and then we will see areas like Birmingham, Huntsville, and then eventually up into Tennessee clear. And that's going to be, uh, hopefully, the later that happens, the better, basically, is what I'm saying here. So the quicker that happens, the worst case. But at this point, it's 432, and half of the Gulf states are cleared. So it's not looking good at this point. I think that's probably has to, a lot to do with why they upgraded to a high risk. So what we're going to do here is we're going to fly in and take a look at the categorical risks from the National Weather Service. And then we're going to take a look at some modeled guidance. Now, real quickly, this is last week's high risk on screen. Now that you can see, this was exactly what we saw last week. And then try to spot the difference here. Take a look. So memorize that mentally real quick. In three, two, one. I switched it. There's obviously a little bit of a difference, but it is shocking how close these two eye risks are together. Exactly one week apart. It is like doppelgangers at this point. Very, very wild. Uh, the general thunderstorm risk there in the lighter green. That's where you can expect some thunderstorms. Not really expecting severe weather, but do still pay attention because things do happen that are wild. Uh, we see that darker green, and that's our marginal risk. Don't downplay this because you're in the marginal risk or the slight risk. You definitely do still have the chance of seeing a tornado, uh, an isolated tornado, or possibly some hail or damaging wind. So you're going to want to watch those warnings and advisories for your area. That's going to be very good advice there. Uh, same story for the slight risk, except we do expect a little bit more of some scattered severe weather to be a little bit more widespread. And then we move up into the enhanced risk region, which is that orange region. Uh, so that's for Kentucky, a little bit of Arkansas, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, even a little bit of Louisiana there. And that is where it begins to get kind of scattered, kind of widespread, uh, kind of, yeah, somewhere in between there. The moderate risk is where it begins to be widespread, where there's a very good chance that your city is going to get hit with a bad thunderstorm. Uh, and then the high risk is where they expect basically everywhere in there to get slammed uh, and there to just be the absolute maximum risk of tornadoes within there. But I don't want everybody to pay too much attention to the high risk. There's a there's a higher risk everywhere, basically. So uh, we're going to be watching this throughout the day on that live stream. Oh, yeah, I forgot to shout that out, guys. Make sure to check out that live stream. I did it yesterday. That's going to be in the pinned comment and the description. If you're interested in watching that, you're going to want to hit that reminder button on the bottom left there, and that will notify you when we start that up. I've extended the start time of that to 2 p.m. 
because the initiation of those storms seems to be kind of delayed as of most recent model guidance. So I'm expecting to go live sometime between, uh, I would say sometime between 12 and 3, but likely between 12 or 1 and 2. Okay. Now, here is that day one wind outlook. 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location within the green, and it's going to be within 25 miles with all of these percentages, so I'm not going to say that every time, but 15% there in the yellow, and then there's a 30% chance there in the red, and then a 45% chance there in the purple within 25 miles of a given location. Basically, a 50-50 chance that your town is going to get hit with damaging wind, which is absolutely insane to think about. Uh, that, that hatched area there, that very large hatched area, means they expect actually significant damaging wind to be possible. So, like, well beyond uh, the the bar of severe. So, uh, pretty strong winds there. Here's the hail, and actually the hail isn't as high as of now, uh, which is pretty interesting considering they're expecting supercells. So, I'm curious about what the reason behind that is. Uh, but we do have a 5% chance there within the green, a 15% chance there within the yellow, and then a 30% chance there within the red. And again, that hatched region there for the hail, which I think indicates 2-inch diameter or more hail to be likely there. And then the tornadoes, which I'm obviously extremely concerned about, uh, which actually has an equal chance with the hail, which is just wild. But we have a 2% chance there within the green, which you're going to want to take very seriously. Again, a 2% chance of tornadoes is a bad percent chance, that's what I would say. A uh, five percent chance there within the brown, a fifth or sorry, a ten percent chance there within the yellow, a fifteen percent chance there within the red, and then within that purple region there for Mississippi, Alabama, and a little bit of southern Tennessee there, that's where we're at a thirty percent chance of tornadoes, which is too high for comfort, obviously. Um, seeing a thirty percent chance of a tornado hitting within twenty five miles of your home is a little bit discomforting, obviously. We have that significant. Uh, that, that basically that hatch SIG region there uh, within all of those hatched regions. And that's where they expect EF3s or above to be uh, quite possible there within all of those regions. That's pretty widespread. We're going to be watching all of this obviously throughout the day, like I said, on that live stream. Now, what we're going to do here is we are going to move on and we are going to work through that modeled guidance, take a look at the expected temperatures, dew points, Cape Shear, the significant tornado parameter, the simulator radar, all of these things are coming up in just a moment. All right, now first things first, here we are taking a look at those expected high temperatures. This is approximately around 2 or 3 p.m. there today, obviously. Uh, and we're taking a look at lower to mid 70s here throughout the entire high risk and moderate risk region. Uh, and that is going to be mostly due to that clearing that this model does pick up on happening pretty early on. So we were expected to be in the lower 70s. I've noticed we've seen a little bit of an uh, upgrade there with the temperatures. Uh, where we've seen just like maybe 2 or 3 degrees higher, which is obviously just a little bit better for severe weather. Uh, same thing with the dew point, except we didn't really de increase that much. This is looking pretty similar to yesterday morning. It's pretty much the same thing it was calling for. And that cape, look, we're seeing those mid-2000s to upper 2000s up into the 3000s here uh, throughout the entire height of this event. So this is very similar to last week. This is the main reason why we expected uh, that high risk. I said that yesterday that I expected to go high, likely, uh, just because it, of the similarities to last week. If they would do it last week, they would do it this week. That's kind of my mentality, um, just because everything's pretty much the same here. By the time we reach about maybe... Uh, 10 p.m. You can see that cape significantly has decreased, but it's still there. But you can tell where that line of storms is basically cutting that off and eating up that cape. You can just see the line. Uh, here's the shear. It's going to be very high, very elevated. We see the browns and the pinks especially is where we expect the highest, which is for the entire severe weather region basically. So uh, this helps with wind damage and tornado development. So that's what that's going to do. Let's just work through that simulated radar now. And first things first, we're at about 2 p.m. here. And look, these storms are just getting started by 2 p.m. That's why I scheduled the stream for 2 p.m. Because if nothing's going to be there, I'm, I need to preserve my voice. Brendan, unfortunately, will not be able to join us. So I need to be able to make sure I last into the height of that event uh, so that I can be with you guys through that tornado activity. So I'm going to start this as late as I possibly can while still keeping everybody safe, if that makes sense. So by 2 p.m., these storms are just getting started. 3 p.m., they are beginning to become a little bit more widespread. Probably two or three supercells are developing by this point. That significant tornado parameter is already through the roof. Again, that maximum on the scale is 10. I don't even want to emphasize that too much because I did. I, I think I overemphasized that yesterday. But we're at a 14.33 already by 3 p.m., which is 
4.33 above the maximum. Uh, here we are by time we're taking a look at maybe about 4 p.m. Uh, here on Thursday. And as you can see, now there's probably, I mean, this model's indicating that there's probably like a handful of supercells by this point widespread, especially throughout Mississippi, but also throughout northern Alabama by this point, possibly still Arkansas and possibly southern Tennessee. So very widespread. Our significant tornado parameter by this point is 19.01. So, I mean, just very high, very, very high. Uh, almost double the maximum. By time we're taking a look at about 4 p.m., you can see those are still widespread, the supercells. They're now on the very eastern front of Mississippi, moving into Alabama, moving up into Tennessee as well. Tennessee looks the worst by this point. The significant tornado parameter by 4 p.m. Uh, is expected to be, according to this model, 27.61. Uh, so just through the roof, I mean, more than double the maximum there. Yesterday, actually, this model was calling for like 37 on the significant tornado parameter at one point. So I'm very glad we've lowered from that point because I don't think I've ever seen it get that high ever. So that was obviously shocking to see. Here's my time we're reaching about 5 p.m. Look at that uh, line of thunderstorms developing there from Mississippi. That is going to work its way through. But we can see those supercells moving from Mississippi into Alabama and widespread throughout Tennessee there. By this point, the significant tornado parameter by this point is expected to be 28.41, so still just through the roof. And then by the time we're reaching about 6 p.m., you can see that there is still that line of supercells, um, and our significant tornado parameter is at 25.96. And then by about 7 p.m. or so here, uh, you can see that those supercells are still around. There is still some. Then we have a 22.08 uh, there on the significant tornado parameter. And then by the time we're taking a look at about 11 p.m., you can see that these storms will still be around, but they will actually be uh, a little bit weaker, according to this model, by this point. And that will generally slowly come to an end. Our confidence is a high, a 6 out of 6. Unfortunately, obviously this is happening today. We have very high confidence there will be a tornado outbreak. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday if this one will go to a high risk. An anonymous sports fan said... I got it right last time. I'll call it again. We're going to be at a high risk by tomorrow. And sure enough, we are. So good comment of the day there. Uh, but it is it is unfortunate, obviously. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel. But especially our platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Alan Balemo, Adam S., Larry LaPan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael... Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flego, Garys, and John Quilisi. If you'd like to be part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, guys, be, be sure to absolutely destroy that like button today. Be sure to subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.